Here we have an anterior view of the iliacus. On the right side, we see it alone. On the left side, we see it along with the psoas major. When the iliacus and psoas major are considered together, very often they are grouped together as the iliopsoas muscle. The iliacus attaches from the internal surface of the ilium and then goes down distally to attach onto the lesser trochanter of the femur. So let's take a look at the iliacus on the right side with our model, Marilyn, standing here, anterior view for the camera. She has her arms behind her just so we don't block a view of the bustle or the motion uh, joint action patterns here. So first the name of the muscle, iliacus. The iliacus is named the iliacus because it attaches onto the ilium and it attaches onto the internal surface of the ilium. It then crosses the hip joint anteriorly and makes its way medially to attach onto the lesser trochanter of the femur along with the psoas major muscle. So now we'll take a look at the joint actions of this muscle first in the sagittal plane and then in the transverse plane. We'll begin with the open chain standard joint actions where the distal attachment moves toward the proximal attachment and then we'll do the closed chain reverse actions where the proximal attachment, the pelvis, moves toward the distal attachment, the thigh, the femur. So let's start with the sagittal plane, open chain, action. The iliacus crosses the hip joint anteriorly with a vertical direction to its fibers. Therefore, it would pull the anterior surface of the thigh toward the anterior surface of the pelvis and we would have flexion of the thigh at the hip joint, as we see here. Come on back down. Now, there is a slight wrapping around in the transverse plane. There's a slight horizontal line component joint action here. So when we pull the lesser trochanter femoral attachment toward the iliac attachment, we would get lateral external rotation of the thigh at the hip joint. Back to neutral posture. Now, there really is only one line of pull for the iliacus, and therefore it has one oblique plane joint motion pattern. And that would be a combination of the sagittal and transverse plane cardinal plane components. So when it pulls, it would give us both flexion in the sagittal plane with lateral rotation in the transverse plane. Okay, back down. Now let's look at the closed chain kinematics here. If the foot is stable, fixed on the floor, then the foot is fixed, the leg is fixed, the thigh is fixed, then the pelvis would be more mobile and would move toward the distal attachment. We'd get the reverse actions, proximal moving toward distal. Sagittal plane first, again, it crosses in the sagittal plane anteriorly with a vertical direction to its fibers. So when it pulls the pelvis toward the thigh, it would pull the pelvis into anterior tilt at the hip joint here. Come on back up. To better see this, we'll have a lateral view. And now go ahead and anteriorly tilt the pelvis at the hip joint. And she let the upper body go along for the ride, so to speak. So we have a pure isolated anterior tilt action at the hip joint of the pelvis. Come on back up. But if she kept her upper body vertical and then anteriorly tilted the pelvis at the hip joint, we would get a compensation in the lumbar spine by increasing the lordotic curve of extension, which pushes the weight bearing posteriorly off of the discs, but loads the facets and can jam the facets and cause low back pain. So hip flexors that get tight very often posturally cause low back pain with this hyperlordotic lumbar spine, what Vladimir Yanda called lower crossed syndrome, postural distortion pattern. Okay, back facing the camera. We have the transverse plane, component cardinal plane action, moving the pelvis toward the thigh. And instead of bringing the pelvic medial attachment toward the iliac lateral attachment, we will move the lateral iliac attachment toward the medial pelvic attachment, and we would get rotation of the pelvis to the opposite side of the body, which is contralateral rotation of the pelvis at the hip joint, which for the right side, iliacus would be left rotation. And back facing the camera,
But of course, there's just one oblique plane line of pull here across both the sagittal and the transverse planes. So when the pelvis is moved by the iliacus closed chain, we would get both anterior tilt and contralateral rotation of the pelvis at the hip joint.